Okay, this side is completed. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the back side. The depth is already set and correct, so I'll come in and at, until I touch the work and then dial it in 75 thousandths. Now I'm not going to show this because it's on the back side of the work and it's not going to show up anyway, plus it's uh, pretty much a repeat of the front. So I will do that off camera. Okay, all the milling has been completed. So we got one T-nut that's five inches long and I checked the dimensions and it's pretty close like I told you that uh, it isn't very critical on something like this but I I went over and I did fit it into the table and, and it fitted nice into the T-slots so next thing I'm gonna put some layout die on the top and I'm gonna lay out both uh, the location of the holes and where I'm going to saw cut it I have been busy doing a little layout work and just using a uh, my six-inch scale and, and my uh, brown and sharp scriber I laid out uh, these lines here on the center line one two three four five now that's where I'm gonna drill this is waste stock out here the parallel railroad tracks here are uh, basically where I'm gonna saw those are between the, the lines and there'll be a little bit of waste stock. That's more than what I need for the saw curve, but it allows me to probably belt sand them down to the line. Now I'm, and the center line I put on there with the height gauge. However, I'm going to do this on the milling machine using the digital readout, and I will go along there and I'll find the center, and I will uh, center drill each one of those uh, holes. And then I'll go back and drill them all five sixteenths and then I'm going to do the tapping in the bench vise. I've installed a center drill in the chuck and I've located this way onto my layout line so that's my first hole I'm going to center drill that hole and then I'm going to move it down seven eighths of an inch that's eight hundred and seventy five thousandths center drill the next one move it eight seventy five and so on five times to drill my 5 16 holes five of them in a row and notice that I removed the parallels because I'm going to drill all the way through so I just tap them out and they're out of there I won't damage the parallel and I've already drilled the first hole now here's a tip for you buy yourself a set of stubby drill bits this is a 5 16 stubby so I don't have to drop the table way out of the way which is really a nuisance and then crank it back up maybe for the next operation. So get yourself stubby bits. And a 5 16 is the tap drill size for 3 8 16. I've already drilled the first one and I moved it back using the digital readout 875 thousandths for this next one. Remember I said I'm making uh, five of these instead of four. And one is a spare, like a spare tire in your car. Sometimes you never do use it, even in the lifetime of the car. But uh, let's say I broke off the tip of a 
of a center drill. Uh, I could just discard that piece and quite often you will do that uh, during your career so that's why I go with the spare and I will drill the rest right now. Now this step is optional fast forward if you don't like it. Before I tap these holes I like to uh, take the clearance size which is 3 8 I've got it in the drill press here and drill uh, approximately an eighth inch deep or maybe a little bit deeper as you can see that I did right there and the purpose of that is that it allows me even a greater ability to, to tap straight so I don't ruin these in the very last step. Now yes you could tap them on the drill or on the milling machine while you were at it but I'm going to do it by hand so that's why I'm doing that and you say well that weakens this now so uh, it might strip out. Well remember here's a standard 3 8 nut and all you need is that thickness there of, of thread for the full strength. Any uh, extra is uh, uh, superfluous. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of those off camera. Then we're ready to tap. Before I start tapping let me make a point here. <clears throat> it's been my experience with commercially made tap nuts. <clears throat> I just got a frog in my throat that what they generally do is when they tap these they don't uh, go all the way through they leave a little bit of a, of a thread uh, near the end that is a, that will bind the screw so it won't go all the way through because as you tighten your work up some you do not want the stud here or the, the threaded part to go all the way through push against the bottom of the T-nut and possibly uh, damage or, or crack the casting so uh, that's how they uh, go about that this particular one here has been staked see the little marks there such that the uh, stud will not go any farther in than, than that you can see it hitting the bottom but when I tap mine I think I'll tap them just a little bit shy of, of uh, going through with my uh, with my taper tap so in other words instead of running it all the way through like this I'm just going to stop maybe about at that point and then I'm going to see how far a 3 8 bolt goes in and then I'll I'll decide uh, how, how deep I want to go with that so that's my next step now if you want to turn these into uh, these T-nuts into T-bolts you can also use some threaded rod and then use uh, the permanent type of uh, Loctite that will not come out and uh, Loctite uh, some studs in there and you'll be making uh, T-bolts but mine are going to be T-nuts I have already tapped one hole right here and I determined uh, by a little trial and error there that if I allow the tap to come out the bottom about a quarter inch it's uh, going to give me just the, the right depth of thread so that the bolt bottoms out approximately uh, when it comes to the bottom of the T-nuts rather than a totally through hole which I discussed a minute ago so try to tap these straight now and that little uh, counter bore that I put in there certainly helps then I'm looking underneath And there we go, we got about a quarter inch of tap sticking out of the bottom. And I will tap the other three. I should have drilled and tapped this one while I was at it, but I wasn't in the mood. But I took a file and uh, took all the burrs off the bottom. And then here's what I meant. When I screw this in by hand, it kind of abruptly stops right there about flush again that's optional if you want them to go all the way through go ahead with it now I'm going to go over to the band saw and I'm going to saw basically right between the lines there until I uh, this is waste stock on the end but I'll end up with five one two three four five usable t-nuts I think and then I'm going to belt sand the ends. I'm on the vertical 
metal cutting bandsaw. Now, if you don't have one of these saws, make sure you get one. It's a mighty handy tool to have in the shop. Uh, in addition to your woodworking bandsaws, and always use a pusher block. Keep your fingers away from that blade. more cuts. I'm at the Delta 6 inch band sander or uh, belt sander and uh, I've been sanding these down each time I cut one off because I got a long piece to hold on to so I don't burn my fingers or have the the work go wacky on me or uh, and I can also keep it square against the miter gauge I and mean, I got this kind of reverse for, uh, for camera purposes but I'm just going to square the ends off and take it down to the line. sand the other end, uh, the short end, I got to do it uh, freehand. This is too short to use the miter gauge. Also I like to lay a board on there such that there's no chance of something getting wedged down in there. So this I can push all the way up against the belt and then I'm just freehanding it. But it'll get hotter than a pistol and I do have a, a layout line to follow. But I will have to cool it often. I took each and every one of the T-nuts and uh, deburred it, broke all the corners, softened the edges, etc, etc. If I had a tumbling barrel, that would be the ideal way to do that. And there they are, the finished product, five of them. Six if I ever bothered to tap that and drill that one. Let's step over to the Duro drill press and check them out. And there we go, we got a perfect fit. The smallest T bolts I had in stock were, were these, and I, they are a 3 8, but they don't begin to fit in there, and I would have to either grind these down or whatever, or, or mill them off. They might be hardened, but they didn't fit in there. However, that size fits in here. But uh, so now I got a set of T T uh, nuts for this particular machine. Now I like this type of clamp, and that could be used to clamp uh, work. I've only got one of these. I need to buy some more. But of course, this would have to be used in conjunction with threaded rod and a nut on the top, rather than a bolt. And these are. Uh, can be adjusted to different heights. I also have some of these, but most of these are way out of proportion and way too large, the ones they use on the milling machine. Homemade clamps of any type uh, would be suitable too, or sometimes we can clamp the work directly to the table, though of course we don't ever want to drill into the table, and this machine for some reason has survived for 50 years without anyone drilling a hole through there, so I, I rather cherish the table. Okay, that completes uh, this job. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.